Hey YouTube, what is going on? It's Huncho here, back with another video. Today's video is going to focus on lowering your network latency and hopefully fixing any packet loss issues that you may have. Before we get into this video, I just want to give a shout out to my Discord and my mods in the Discord. You can find it down in the description. It's an easy place to get help for the simple things or the complicated things about your PC. We already have over 300 members in there and it's still growing day by day. If you're not already, please click that subscribe button down below if these videos that I've produced have helped you. It's a great way to give thanks back to me without having any cost to yourself. Now on to the video. So our first step of this video, make sure you do not skip this step, is to hard restart, also called power cycling, your router and modem. So that's where you unplug the router and then unplug the modem. Don't use the reset button, like physically unplug it for a full 60 seconds and then plug your modem back in, wait for the green lights to come on and then plug your router back in. If you think about your router and modem as a PC, imagine if you had your PC on 24 seven for weeks on end. This is something that you wanna do at least once a week, especially if you're a competitive gamer. I would even do it the day of every tournament. The second step is clearing your temp files. So to locate your startup folder, you're gonna to go to your C disk and then click on users. Then you're gonna click on the name of your desktop. App data, if this is hidden, you might have to go to view and check the hidden items. So we're gonna to go to app data, roaming, Microsoft, Windows, start menu, programs, startup, and I paste these into here. And every time my computer starts up, we'll delete the Fortnite game folder, so all of that cache. Delete the prefetch, delete temp files, delete the Windows temp files, and flush our DNS. So if you've seen my previous videos, you know what these are, flushing the DNS, it's just ipconfig slash flush DNS. These files are going to be found in the four startup folder in the lower ping pack that's found in the description. You're also going to see DNS benchmark. What this application does, what this application does is ping every single DNS that you see on this screen. And it'll come up in the response time over here. The ones that are at the top are going to be your fastest and it'll get slower as you go down. So what I always recommend is using OpenDNS, Cloudflare, more of the OpenDNS, or Google, which is the 8.8.8.8 or 8.8.4.4. But when you run this benchmark, whichever ones come up at the top here are gonna be the ones that you want to use. For me, it's OpenDNS. And how we apply that is we go to our settings network and internet, change adapter settings, click on the network, properties, click on the TCP4, properties, and at this bottom one, you're going to click use the following DNS address, type it in, validate your settings, and leave. But while we're still in here, we're going to go to the next step. We're going to click on the advanced. We're gonna uncheck automatic metric, place one. We're gonna go to the wins, uncheck enable LM host lookup, and disable net BIOS over TCP. We want to have all of these unchecked if this is the only thing we're gonna use, which for most of you, you're only gonna be using your TCP IPv4. So what we're gonna do is configure, go to power management, Uncheck the box, uncheck the top box to not allow our computer to turn this off. We're going to go to advanced. And now I want you to follow along with me during this because I'm going to say which settings will work better depending on your system. So first, I'm going to start with high end systems. You could also try this if you do have a lower end PC first, if time isn't of the essence. But most likely, this is going to put too much of a load on your CPU that you're actually gonna have worse results from it. So for my high-end users, we're gonna disable adaptive frame spacing, disable PME, 
Disable energy efficient ethernet. Disable flow control. Keep this on auto detect. Disable interrupt moderation. Turn it off for the rate. Disable all of our checksum offloads, so the IPv4. Disable jumbo packet. Disable offloads. Disable the compatibility mode. Disable battery saver. These you don't have to change. For the RSS queues, for me, I see the best performance when I put this on one. What RSS is, is the receive side scaling that you'll see down here. Receive side scaling allows your load to be balanced across multiple CPU cores, but to get the lowest possible latency, you wanna keep it on one CPU core. However, if you do have a low end system, this could actually cause a CPU bottleneck and you would get worse performance. So we're also gonna turn off the receive side scaling. So this doesn't apply, it'll be to the one queue anyways. If you do have slightly worse performance while doing this, I would say to turn on the receive side scaling and then start with one queue and go up from there to two and then four if you have the option before you change anything else. So then we're gonna disable the packet priority and VLAN, disable ARP and NS offloads. For Intel, if you have gigabyte internet, you're gonna wanna put your receive buffers and your transmit buffers on 2048 it's recommended from their website. However, if you do have other Ethernet adapters, this isn't always the case. Normally, the lower you put your buffers, the better and lower latency that you will have. So keeping it at a low number will lower your latency. However, you can also get packet loss if this number is too low. So you can just keep it at the default of the 2056 and 512. Or you can test it and see if a lower number or higher number works better for you. But normally the faster your internet is, the higher you want your buffers. So then we're gonna turn off reduce speed on power down. The RSS load balancing profile, I usually just set to closest processor, but I also don't use the RSS anymore. Just keep this on auto negotiation if you don't know what your speed actually is. But because I know I have one gigabyte, I set it to the one gigabyte. Power saver disabled. We're gonna disable our checksum offloads. The buffer is on 2048. Disable the checksum offloads. Disable the ultra low power mode and disable all of our wakes. So now on lower end systems, I'm gonna show you what to do differently. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is turn on your receive side scaling. Next, you're gonna to wanna to change your maximum number of RSS queues to the highest number possible. Our next step is gonna be turning on checksum offloads. We don't wanna turn on all of these. So first, we're gonna just turn on the IPv4 checksum offload to the RX and TX enabled. And we're gonna turn on our interrupt moderation rate to enabled and minimal. If you have a low end PC with a slow internet speed, you wanna keep this on minimal. If you have a low end CPU, but you have gigabyte internet, you might see better results by putting this all the way up to high or extreme. What I've noticed, keeping it on adaptive, my ping fluctuates a lot, but if I set it on a minimal or extreme or high, it stays more consistent. So again, for the low end CPUs, we're gonna have the interrupt moderation rate enabled, minimal, IPv4 checksum offload enabled, Maximum number of RSS queues to the highest amount. Receive side scaling enabled. And all the other settings will be the same as previously said when talking about the high CPUs. But basically you're gonna disable everything else. Our next step, we are gonna run the GP edit. If you do not have GP edit, there's a bat file in here, courtesy of one of my mods in the Discord, Tommy. You can run this and then you should be able to use run gpedit.msc. If that doesn't work, try restarting your PC first. We are gonna go into computer configuration, administrative templates, network, QoS packet scheduler, and under limit reserve bandwidth, we're gonna edit the policy and disable this. Our next step, we're gonna go under the computer configuration, 
Windows settings, security settings, local policies, user rights assignment, and click on block pages in memory. So the things that we're going to add are administrator, everyone, the name of your PC, local service, network, network service, service, and system. So you're going to add user or group. You're going to hit advanced. You're going to hit find now and find these down below. When you click on it, you're then going to click OK. It's going to pop up underlined here. And then you're going to do this for all of those and then click OK. Then you're going to come back to this screen and see this on here. You're going to click apply and click OK. Lastly, we're going to run the low ping bat file. All of my sources for these tweaks and everything found in this video is down in the description. Since these tweaks were specifically from certain people's websites, YouTube videos, or tweaking guides. So we're going to run this as administrator. We'll see a bunch of OKs. Operation completed successfully. And then we're going to restart our computers. Thank you guys for tuning into this video. I hope this video has lowered your ping and improved your performance in gaming. Please subscribe if you're not already, as I will be doing future videos on more FPS boosting, lowering your latency, not only on your PC, but on your devices, such as mouse, keyboard, and controller. Thank you guys for watching. Peace out.